Inside Outside Innovation is the podcast that brings you the best and the brightest in the world of startups and innovation. I'm your host, Brian Ardinger, founder of InsideOutside.io, a provider of research, events, and consulting services that help innovators and entrepreneurs build better products, launch new ideas, and compete in a world of change and disruption. Each week, we'll give you a front row seat to the latest thinking, tools, tactics, and trends in collaborative innovation. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. I'm your host, Brian Ardinger, and as always, we have another amazing guest. Today with me on the show is Olivia O'Sullivan. Olivia is the Head of Corporate Engagement at Accelerprise, which is a B2B SaaS accelerator. Welcome to the show, Olivia. Thanks for having me, Brian. Hey, I am so glad that you decided to jump on the show with me. We had gotten introduced by a couple of mutual friends. The main reason I wanted to talk is you're in the trenches. <laughs> doing a lot of this stuff in and around corporate and startup mixing and matching. So I wanted to have you on the show to talk about kind of your experiences, what's going on with Accelerprise, both on the East and West Coast, and I think you're moving in, even into Toronto now, just to have a little conversation about corporate and startup innovation. Yeah, definitely. So Accelerprise, at a high level, we, as you mentioned, are kind of a top-ranked B2B SaaS-focused accelerator. We're industry agnostic, but we invest in a number of early-stage tech companies who are building the future of enterprise technology. And my role specifically within corporate engagement, I like to coin myself as a Sherpa, the kind of navigating the waters between, you know, mid-market and enterprise companies who maybe are interested in innovation, working on innovation, you know, have an interest in collaborating with startups, and then ultimately, you know, really being able to bring these smaller, nimble startups into the enterprise space. Let's start at the beginning and talk about how you got involved in venture and how Accelerprise started this process of matching corporates and startups. So I kind of had a very non-linear path into venture, as many people do. So I actually started off my career in advertising as a strategist. I'm someone who is endlessly curious, will forever be a student of the game. And I think the amazing thing about advertising is you get to see all different types of industries. So, you know, tech, telco, finster, retail, consumer, QSR. And you really get insight into, you know, how these industries are changing, what consumer preferences look like. And so for me, early on, you know, really the best brands to work with were the ones who weren't necessarily looking to do things business per usual. You know, these were people who asked hard questions, who wanted to evolve and continue to pivot their brand. And so I was really drawn to this initially and ended up then moving over to McDonald's where I was able to work across their, their value care category and their, their U.S. brand voice and positioning and touch a lot of different elements of the business. But the thing that I kept coming back to was the menu innovation, you know, how we're evolving our in-store experience, technologies that we were creating like mobile order and pay and, and delivery and areas where, where we're really challenging the status quo. And it actually reminds me a lot. I recently read John Chambers' new book and he talks about that, you know, companies today are not going to fail because they do the wrong thing. They're going to fail because they do the right thing for too long. Hmm. And this idea of, you know, continuing to challenge the status quo is something that I've always been drawn to. So as I was able to kind of touch more elements of the business, I think that's the incredible thing about innovation. You know, it doesn't happen in a silo. The best innovation happens when you're able to bring a business together and really understand the challenges and the opportunities holistically. And so after working on McDonald's, I ended up following my, my wonderful boss, Grace Ann Bennett, to Dow Jones where I helped build and launch their strategic services department, which at a very basic level was business consulting. And, you know, we worked with clients that were on enterprise tech, financial services, real estate, luxury, but really kind of getting the full view of the challenges that these businesses were facing today and how they're structured in a way that doesn't really allow for being nimble and moving quickly and sometimes pivoting. And so that led me to move over ultimately to our product and innovation team where I got to kind of work with these clients to essentially say, hey, let's really understand where your industry is going, where these adjacent industries are going, understand who's in this space, you know, what you can do and kind of what your challenges are and how we can develop really smart innovation strategies for your team. And so I recently then joined the Excel Price team. My good friend, Nina Stepanoff, who's my partner in crime here, I actually met at our CrossFit gym. 
and we spent a number of weekends, you know, talking shop just about kind of startups and enterprise innovation and how these two groups of people have so much to be gained from working with one another, but oftentimes, you know, don't, don't have the resources or the bandwidth or really the understanding of the other group to be able to do that when they were kind of interested in bringing someone on to help support this corporate engagement piece, we kicked off that conversation and it ended up being a really great fit. Hey listeners, I wanted to pause this interview for an exciting new announcement. We are bringing back the Inside Outside Innovation Summit right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mark your calendars for October 20th through the 22nd. Tickets are on sale at theiosummit.com. We are going to have experts from the world of Disney, Facebook, American Express, Nike. All these folks are coming together to talk about innovation, disruption, startups, and the world that we live in today. Check it out at theiosummit.com, and we'll see you in October. That's an interesting take because, you know, there's a lot of VCs out there that talk to their portfolio companies and keep them away from corporates, especially on on the corporate venture side. What makes Accelerize think a little bit differently about this process and why would you want to work with startups so early in this kind of venture game? So obviously as an accelerator and seed fund, we obviously are investing in companies really early on. So a big thing for us, obviously, when we're thinking about, you know, who we're investing in, who we feel like is going to be a good fit for our portfolio. A big thing for us is kind of the founding team and understanding the nuances of who they are as a person. Do we feel like they are poised to kind of solve this challenge? A big thing that we talk about internally is you can pivot a product as the market moves or the space evolves, but it's really hard to pivot a person. So for us getting in and the early days, a big thing that we look at is team, obviously traction, product market fit, and just the space in general or something we look at. But when you have these companies that are so early, to your point about some people kind of hide their companies away from enterprise companies. For us, it's a really great opportunity to be able to accelerate growth. You know, we really want to be the Sherpa in between these two groups of people. And I think a lot of times when people shadow their, their companies away from working with larger enterprise clients is because there are a lot of challenges. Big enterprise companies have a threshold in which they're willing to work with a smaller company. So Part of that for us is saying, great, like we need to fundamentally understand on both sides and level set expectations. It might be, we're not going to roll this out across your entire business, but this might be something that you pilot or you test in a sandbox area of your business, or, you know, you collaborate together in how we're shaping the product roadmap. But, you know, from a corporate side, there is so much value in the deep industry knowledge they have in the clients and the problems that they hold and that they deeply understand the resources that they have and the larger business perspective that they have. And from a startup perspective, you know, these are people who are working on phenomenal technologies are really pushing the envelope in terms of industries across the board. They're able to pivot and be very nimble in what they're doing. And there's so much power in bringing these two groups together that we really understand if you set these two groups up for success, and that's kind of the piece that we're really focusing on, then it's kind of a home run on both sides. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what's worked and what's not worked. Obviously, in this space of corporate innovation and startup corporate collaboration, you know, we've seen a lot of innovation theater. We've seen a lot of folks that are interested on both sides to figure out how this works. Tell me a little bit about how Accelerprise works and you know, what are some of the things that you've learned over the years going through this process? Innovation theater is definitely something that is rampant out there. I think people a lot of times, you know, say, oh, well, we hosted a hackathon or we talked about innovation. So we got to kind of check that box. But I think the biggest thing to recognize is, you know, one, innovation does not happen in a silo. So having, you know, one day a year or a week a year that you talk about innovation is really not going to move the needle in a powerful way. It's something that kind of has to be a long-term strategy that a company is going to participate in over time. There has to be connectivity across the business. There has to be really long-term thinking. And a company has to be committed to kind of participating in this ecosystem before they really see change. Mm -hmm. So that's been a a big thing for us. One thing that we've kind of learned and we've seen over the last few years in terms of people, you know, in this space and hoping to bring together startups and larger corporates is there's a lot of emphasis on this kind of initial period where you're making introductions. So 
if I go to some type of enterprise company and I say, hey, you work in financial services, you're really interested in understanding kind of the emerging fintech landscape, you want to know kind of who the early players are, I can introduce you to those people. Mm -hmm. I think at an early stage, there's a lot of benefit to saying, yes, we have some market intelligence, we understand what's happening in the space. But there's this really big missing piece historically of saying, okay, how do I transition from this initial introduction into actually providing some sort of impact? So how do I make sure that these two groups of people that I've introduced or that I've brought together are really set up to meaningfully participate with one another, to meaningfully pilot, and to actually engage in a partnership? And a lot of times, that's kind of just left to the wayside and a lot of the emphasis is on that initial introduction. So for us, we focus a lot of our time on making sure that the groups that we are working with, we're really making sure that these two people are set up for success, that expectations are kind of defined on both sides and that we provide more long-term strategic support in connecting these two groups and ultimately making sure that that introduction turns into something more impactful than just an introduction. Well, I think that's so important. You think about a lot of startups, they may be able to finger their way into a corporate or two and have some early conversations. But if that core person that they're working with leaves or is promoted or something, oftentimes have to start over again. And having that intermediary person who has a better relationship or a more long-term in-depth relationship with multiple players within that corporation can really serve as a guide, whether it's the VC firm or whether it's you know someone within the corporate environment that who's been charged with that corporate Sherpa kind of position. I think that's so important. What are some of the things that you've learned? Maybe give me some case examples or some examples of some corporations that have kind of figured it out and work really well with you guys. So we're still kind of in the early days of building out the long-term partnership that we'll be working with at Excelprise, but it is interesting when you think about the different buckets of corporations in terms of where they kind of are on their innovation journey. So you have you know, people on one side of the spectrum who are in super early days, you know, they might not be even, innovation is something that they maybe talk about very briefly in an executive meeting, but it's not something that they're applying to their business by any mm -hmm. means. And so for these people, what's super helpful is things like, you know, innovation and venture roundtables. So they're looking to really get ahead and meet and learn from industry leading peers. So whether it's bringing together a group of CIOs or CTOs or leading corporate venture builders to really discuss best practices around corporate innovation or working with startups or what CVC looks like. And then you kind of have this group in the middle that they've done some stuff with innovation, they have some defined goals, and a big thing for them is understanding, you know, maybe they want to get more market intelligence. So they want people who are kind of out and about looking at industries that are adjacent to what they're working in, looking at their own industry, how that's evolving and kind of understanding the early players in there, pulling out insights from how the market is changing, and then, you know, figuring out, you know, who's really best poised to kind of help support in their challenges from a startup perspective. And then you have people at the far end of the spectrum who have CVC arms, who have, you know, really established a smart process, taken, you know, great cues from venture teams and people, you know, like Dell Technologies Capital and, and AB InBev at CX Ventures. They really will run well-oiled machines. And for them, you know, they're not necessarily looking to the venture world to provide a lay of the land in terms of how innovation works. But there's obviously always benefits of sharing deal flow and kind of collaborating with people who are seeing stuff a little earlier than maybe they're investing in. But it is interesting kind of as, as we continue to have these conversations, just seeing how dispersed the landscape is in terms of where different corporations sit on that, that line. So are you seeing any new trends or, or new insights as people get more and more kind of familiar with the, the game, so to speak? I think that we're seeing kind of an interesting shift. Five, ten years ago, you saw a lot of enterprise companies actually running accelerator programs out of their offices and kind of creating bespoke programs that cater specifically towards if they were IoT or FinTech or whatever that looks like. And mm -hmm. people, I think, are moving away from that structure just because you know, there's so many accelerators out there who are doing really phenomenal work in terms of programming and, and really being able to build robust portfolios. I think companies are kind of pulling away from porting in a, an accelerator into their company and then kind of 
exporting it at the end of the cycle and being like, okay, are we really set up to work with these people now? Like what, right. what is kind of the output of this? And people are really, you know, kind of moving into more meaningful partnerships, I would say, where they are actually collaborating with startups, doing a lot of, you know, co-innovation. That's something that's been interesting in the last couple of years that we've been seeing a lot of is companies actually bringing in startups to do joint ventures or build products together and kind of being able to harness this brain trust of people. In terms of industries that I think we're seeing a lot of interesting movement, you know, financial services, despite there's a lot of obviously legal hurdles, fintech has just been huge in the space with partnering with startups. We're seeing a lot of stuff early days in the health tech space, which I think I'm super excited about, Mm -hmm. just the possibilities of unlocking really the power of data within the health world is super interesting. Obviously, it's a precarious industry with HIPAA and and data compliance and all that. But I think the early people who are kind of out in that game are doing some phenomenal stuff. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the next two years. But those have kind of been the big things for us. We're kind of shifting away from that innovation theater, less hackathons, less corporate accelerators, and kind of moving into a space where people are looking to partner in a more impactful way. So you mentioned, obviously, team is one of the most important things that you look at when you're looking for investments in that. What are some of the core skills that make or break entrepreneurs or innovators, either on either the startup or the corporate innovation side? I think the biggest thing there, one, is the long-term vision. The founders that I think are the most compelling or, you know, the corporate innovation leaders who you feel like are the most compelling are really individuals who understand and have a clear idea of what their long-term vision is and the tangible steps of what they need to do to get there. Because at the end of the day, innovation is freaking hard. You know, if you (laughs) are an entrepreneur, starting a company is one, you know, potentially one of the most difficult things you're going to do in your life. And on the flip side of that, corporate innovation is an uphill battle. It is you pushing the snowball up the hill where maybe your company is bought into the idea of it, but is not completely sold through on what you're actually doing. And, And a lot of the work there is navigating the political waters of these systems and saying, hey, this is the value in what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And this is where we're going. And, you know, there may be some missteps along the way, but we're going to keep trudging up this hill till we get to the top. So I think the people who, you know, kind of have a clear vision of, of what they're building are extremely compelling. And then really having someone who, who will get the work done, you know, come in day after day, bang your head against the wall until you get through because There are a lot of hurdles. There are a lot of obstacles in order to get to that kind of next level on both the startup and corporate side. So you want to have someone who is willing and able to put in that work because it's going to be a long road. I think the other thing, too, is people who are connectors and are really able to bring people together, especially on the corporate innovation side, are so important because you work at a big company and the last thing that maybe people want to do is you get a bunch of business unit heads together and you say, hey, let's talk about the problems that we're all having. And, right. you know, the room is crickets and you're like, oh, nope, our, my line of business is doing great. We're tracking on our P&L. Everything is smooth sailing. And part of it is saying, okay, how can you be someone to create an environment that's open and collaborative and people are interested in sharing the challenges they're having so that you can ultimately drive the business forward? And then being able to kind of navigate on the other side, collaborating with a startup, you really have to be someone who's able to bring people together, break those silos across the business. So those are definitely three of the big things that I think are are really crucial and something that we definitely look for in the companies that we invest in and the partners that we work with. The last question I have is, so what's next for Acceleprise? I know you guys are expanding in that, but what's next for Acceleprise and what's next for you? We are actually about to kick off our next programs in both San Francisco and New York in June, which is super exciting. So that'll be our 11th program that we're running out of San Francisco and then our third program out of New York. So we'll be investing in another 20-ish companies. We've already invested in over 100 to date, so we're excited that the portfolio is going to continue to grow. As you mentioned, In the beginning of this, we are opening an office in Toronto, which will be launching in 2020. So we are currently on the hunt for kind of a managing director for the office out there. Sounds great. 
Well, Olivia, thank you very much for being on Inside Outside Innovation and sharing your insights on what's going on in the world of uh, corporate and startup innovation. And I look forward to continuing the conversation in the years to come. Thanks so much, Brian. I appreciate it. That's it for another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. If you want to learn more about our team, our content, our services, check out insideoutside.io or follow us on Twitter at the IO Podcast or at Artinger. Until next time, go out and innovate.